Hi, David. Hi, Karat. What risk management standards are currently used, if you can tell us? This is a very interesting question. Uh, I've been involved in standards development for maybe 20 years, and there are a lot of risk management standards. Now, that's quite strange. Uh, you, know, you would think there is a single standard. And I don't know if you know the history of the word standard. It's quite interesting. In English, the standard is a flag. And the flag was used during battle, uh, and it was, it was flown where the king was, or where the leader of the army was. And so they put the flag here to say, this is where the center of our army is, where the leader of our army is. And when there's a battle going on, and there's lots of confusion, and there's smoke and screaming, and people running about, you need to know where to rally the troops. And the troops rally to the standard. And if you have more than one standard, it doesn't help in the sense in the heat of battle when there's a lot of confusion. Where yes. do you run to? Yes. And so we are in the position in risk management where we have something like 18 or 20 standards. So the question is, when there's confusion and uh, conflict, where Which do you run? run? Yes. Which standard do you run yes. to? Yes. Uh, there should be one standard. Now, we've moved towards that with the ISO organization, the International yes. Standards Organization. Yes. And in 2009, they published ISO 31000, yes. which is uh, risk management principles and guidelines. And in risk management principles and guidelines, there are eight prin uh, 11 principles. There is a framework for risk management. Yes. There's a generic process for risk management. There are definitions that support risk management. And then there's a whole set of appendices which give useful information to support you. And so ISO 31000 claims to be the standard that we should all run to. And I think that's, there's probably some, some truth in that. It, it's quite, quite short, quite overarching, quite generic, and you can apply it in all different settings. And the ISO 31000 is currently being updated uh, with the release expected in 2018. So ISO 31000 uh, is probably the one standard overarching but it's so generic that it needs some kind of tailoring or, or instantiation, um, making specific to different settings. So I have here a, a list of standards. Uh, these, th there are this many standards that I'm aware of, and there are others. So you see, I've started to make another list below here of different standards that uh, we could refer to. And certainly within different um, uh, settings, you might want to refer to a financial risk standard or an environmental risk standard, or a project risk standard. Um, in the UK, we have a particular standard um, produced by the UK government. It's called Management of Risk, MOR, um, and it's a very powerful uh, set of guidelines. There's, there's a principles document and a guidelines document, uh, guidelines for practitioners, and you can certify as an MOR practitioner or an MOR expert. Um, and it's the way that the UK government manages risk in all of its government projects. And when you say government, which uh, exactly, which body are you referring to? Which the governmental body? The cabinet. It comes from the cabinet oh, office. Okay. Right. So originally there was an office of government commerce, OGC, right. okay. and that's been absorbed recently into the cabinet office because there's a recognition that risk management is, is one of the responsibilities of government. And we talked in an earlier question about national risk yes. to say that in the UK, we have a national risk register maintained by the UK government, yes. by the Cabinet yes. Office, yes. which lists the top 20 risks Correct. to the nation. Country and that's published on the government websites and so on. Um, so you have that, you would have the Institution of Civil Engineers, um, which has its own risk management standards, yeah. RAMP it's called, R Risk Analysis yes. and Management of Projects. Um, which is a very uh, well-defined standard now in its third edition, um, and it's uh, specific to application of risk management in civil engineering. engineering yes. The Project Management Institute yes. has a risk management standard for projects. Yep. It's a practice standard uh, for management of risk in projects. Um, so all of these are applications in specific areas. Um, so I think when we're referring to standards, we should use them to validate our approach and to guide our approach, but recognize that um, we should always be tailoring that approach to what fits for our organization. And the interesting thing is that even with ISO 31000, you can't certify against it. It's very carefully positioned as risk management principles and guidelines. And so it's not a certification standard like ISO 9001, for example, for quality management. Yes. 
um, it is a guideline which you are then expected to tailor for your own particular application. So many flags on the battlefield, you could choose which one to run to sure. for your particular application. I would recommend that we raise the 31,000 flag higher than the others and start to run to that, but still recognise its only guidelines that need to be tailored. Thank you so much, David. It's a pleasure.